the last class we derived the wave equation and please remember that we derived the wave equation from the fundamental equations of fluid mechanics and uh, that is we, we just uh, took the equations of fluid mechanics we linearized those equations and then manipulated the equation to get a nice linear equation which is uh, it is a second order partial differential equation and we actually, actually got solutions for this equation. Now the solutions were if you remember of the form f of x plus ct and g of x minus ct. So this uh, x minus ct when that is the argument that corresponds to a right running wave and um, x plus ct corresponding to a, corresponds to a left running wave and then we also derived expression for uh, acoustic velocity in terms of the acoustic pressure we uh, saw that uh, they were related by the characteristic impedance rho c for the right running wave uh, the acoustic velocity was acoustic pressure divided by rho c and for the left running wave there was a minus sign it was negative of acoustic pressure divided by rho c that is because of the difference in the direction of motion of the uh, gas or the difference in direction of the particle velocity that the sign is there. Now in, in this class uh, uh, we are going to try to look at harmonic waves. Now um, this is a very simple concept and you can um, understand a lot of things although we are uh, uh, often you could have many different frequencies. But nevertheless the situation in which you have just one frequency is not all that rare I mean it can happen quite easily and you can set it up nicely in a laboratory. So um, physically to have harmonic waves you need a sound source that gives sound at a single frequency and that is not too hard to imagine you can have a loudspeaker or a piston which is vibrating at a single one particular frequency. And uh, so this is a very simple and ideal case of uh, wave propagation and it is quite fundamental because uh, even if you have transient signals or uh, signals with uh, many different frequencies in it uh, or, or, or waves that are not sinusoidal you could actually use Fourier uh, transform and then actually you can uh, express this complex signal as uh, a superposition of uh, various different harmonic waves and with so if you can analyze one particular frequency you can analyze all particular frequencies and since we are having a linear theory that is our differential equation is linear and if our boundary condition is also linear then you can actually have solutions which can be <coughs> superposed and you can construct solutions for more complicated situations. Uh, so let us get on with uh, uh, harmonic waves. So for uh, studying harmonic waves you would have guessed correctly that we would be using sines and cosine you can use either of them it is one wave is shift phase shifted to get uh, another so there is no problem with that. So let us write so this is a typical expression for plane propagation of harmonic waves plane because we are talking about one dimensional wave or x is the only spatial dimension and you can also see that this is of the form f of t minus x over c. This is like a uh, you know we saw the solutions f of t minus x over c and this was the right running wave and if you did have the other function g of t plus x over c then you could write the corresponding wave as a cos 2 pi f, 2, 2 pi uh, f, f is the frequency here times uh, t plus x over c minus phi naught. Uh, <coughs> this is uh, oscillating at a single frequency and the frequency here is uh, f. So uh, this is the f which corresponds to solution which we had last time but what I have written here f is the f is the frequency. Uh, now uh, phi naught is the uh, initial phase um, this is because depending on your choice of coordinate system depending on when you start the clock you can uh, change uh, the phase depends on that actually it is with reference to a, a reference time. So depending on the uh, uh, starting of time t equal to 0 you you need a uh, phase because sin and cos depends on uh, you know the phase depends on when you start your time. <coughs> so uh, there are 
two possibilities to visualize a harmonic wave you can either uh, you know we have a function of uh, time and x so we can one particular way to do this is you can freeze the time and look at it as a function of x the other possibility is you can freeze x and look at it as a function of time so you 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 freeze the space and look at it look at the wave as a function of time and we can make out certain characteristics from it and we can do the opposite so let me uh, first look at um, freeze the space that is uh, at one particular space i'm sitting and looking at the wave so what i could do is to put a microphone at one particular location and see how the uh, uh, how the wave looks like and uh, we can uh, take the signal from the microphone to oscilloscope and visualize it so let me draw how a typical signal would look like would be the time period t the period is defined as the time with which the pattern repeats so either the time is the it's interval between two crusts or two troughs or, or any two points which are uh, uh, similar uh, and uh, you have the amplitude here which is a so that's the uh, uh, amplitude of the wave and here we are now let me mark the axis it's p of uh, let us say some reference value p of t 0 comma t as a function of t and uh, you can easily see that this particular value if I read off this would be a cos phi naught. So that is because the uh, reference phase. So this picture uh, clearly defines what is a what is phi naught and what is the time period uh, t and uh, the idea is that the wave repeats after every time interval t so with that we can look at what happens to uh, or we can actually derive the relationship between time period t and frequency uh, so if the uh, if the wave repeats after every time interval t your argument will actually change by 2 pi you know sin theta is same as sin theta plus 2 pi so if we will use that and say that so this is after a time interval t minus what was there at original time so if the wave is periodic we will get a phase difference of 2 pi so if you expand this you will see 2 pi f t plus 2 pi f t minus 2 pi f x over c minus phi naught minus 2 pi f t minus 2 pi f x over c minus phi naught equal to 2 pi and you can see this cancels this cancels this cancels so what you would get is 2 pi f t equal to 2 pi which we can simplify and say f t equal to 1 or time period t equal to 1 over f I think all of you knew this in advance but this is like a rigorous way of saying that the time period of a wave is goes like the reciprocal of the frequency. <coughs> now we will do the other approach uh, what we can do is in, in this particular example we froze the uh, distance so we said we will stay at x equal to 0 and we looked at the uh, uh, variation in time so instead what we can do is we freeze at one particular time and then we see the variation in x how do you how is it possible to freeze in one particular time so what we can do is we can put microphones at various locations along the duct or whatever and you make measurements at one instant t one, one particular instant of time you make measurements with several different microphones along your um, duct where the sound is propagating and plot them so that would be the way how to get uh, the distribution along space so what um, you would get is be um, something of this uh, form So now what I am having is p of 
x comma 0 that is the time t equal to 0 as a function of x and let us mark the important features now the uh, distance between two peaks would now be the wavelength lambda that is the length of the wave that is the distance between two different waves uh, two, two different uh, uh, distance between two different peaks you can also define it as distance between two different crusts uh, and so on and uh, amplitude here is the same it will be a and you also have the reference phase a cos phi naught actually a cos minus phi naught but min a cos of minus phi naught is same as cos of phi naught. Now you can uh, try to get a relationship between the wavelength and the uh, frequency what you can do is we do the same thing as we did here uh, see when the pattern repeats so uh, the uh, uh, periodicity means you get a difference uh, in phase of 2 pi between um, two different crusts or two different troughs and so on. So 2 pi f times t minus x over c plus lambda, lambda is the wavelength uh, minus phi naught minus 2 pi f for t minus x over c minus phi naught equal to 2 pi. So you can see this. Uh, term cancels with this, this cancels here, this cancels here and what you would get is 2 pi f lambda uh, okay should have lambda over c x is x plus lambda uh, over c equal to 2 pi or you would get f lambda equal to c or uh, lambda equal to c over f. So that is if you divide the speed of sound divided by number of waves uh, per second you would get the wavelength. I think uh, this is also a intuitive, uh, intuitive result and uh, we have derived this somewhat rigorously here. In other words within this uh, uh, time interval t the peak has travelled at distance lambda uh, at the speed c c is the speed of sound. Uh, now I just want to do one more definition which is uh, wave number k which is defined as 2 pi over lambda and uh, which is equal to 2 pi f over c which is also defined as omega over c. Now so k is the wave number which is defined as 2 pi over lambda which is uh, uh, which can be written as lambda is c over f so c over f here which is omega over c omega is referred to as the angular frequency So we can now write the harmonic wave expression for the harmonic wave as follows this is what we had to begin with we can equivalently write this in terms of omega also in terms of wave number we can write because omega over c is k uh, this is written for the uh, right turning wave we can also similarly get expression for the left turning wave as well how many waves are there per meter or, or per centimeter whatever so that this is the number of waves per unit distance. <coughs> so there it, it is very physical concept in fact this concept came from um, electromagnetic theory and so on where they were actually in spectrum counting how many waves were there in per unit distance but the same thing con, uh, uh, holds here. 
now the next thing we want to do is <coughs> we want to use the complex notation because it turns out that your algebra is very convenient in uh, complex uh, notation uh, it is more convenient than using trigonometric functions and so let us uh, try to um, do the derivation uh, try, try to work out acoustics in the complex notation it is equal and you can either use complex uh, numbers or we can use cos and sin and we I will talk about the equivalence. So <coughs> we know the formula e power i theta equal to cos theta plus i sin theta. So, this is the basic formula how to convert uh, a, a bit how to go between uh, complex numbers and uh, cosines and sines and that is all we would need for the course nothing more than that. So, what we know now is that when you say we have again as I mentioned earlier sometimes we drop the primes but there is really primes uh, uh, they are the fluctuating pressure but if I drop it that is uh, uh, that is okay because that is a standard convention to drop this <coughs> but I as far as I remember I will try to keep the primes. So, so if you see this formula e power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. So, cos theta is the really the real part of e power i theta. So, if you want a function with cos theta and you insist on writing exponential e power i theta then what you can do is you can write cos theta as real part of e power i theta. So, if you want uh, so let me write that. So, R e refers to real part of. So, uh, if I have a expression for a harmonic wave as follows I can now write it as real part of a e power i times k x minus omega t plus phi naught. Uh, so, when you do this e power i times this factor you will have cos and sin and we want only the cos. So, we take the real part. Now, uh, so, p prime is the real pressure there is so complex notation is only a convenient way to do the algebra there is nothing complex about the uh, whole idea it is just that we are using complex numbers. Now when you use the term complex number we say that the cos theta uh, is there plus i times sin theta we say i is a imaginary number. For example we say that if, if you have a number a plus i b we call a the real part and we say b is the imaginary part i b is the imaginary part. But I want to emphasize that there is nothing imaginary about the imaginary numbers it is just a bad nomenclature. So, you can think of a plus i beta we can alternately think of it as you know two quantities describing something it is like if you have a vector a times i plus b times j. So, suppose you have a vector a times i plus b times j and this i and j are the basis function they are the unit vectors along i is the unit vector along the x axis j is the unit vector along y axis. So, now we write the vector along this basis function using this basis functions. So, a and b are the components which are the projections along this basis functions. So, instead of using i and j the basis functions that we use are 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 1 comma 0 in conventional uh, conventionally we refer to as 1 and 0 comma i we refer to as uh, i. So, it is just complex number is a quantity which helps you to uh, there are some quantities which need two things to be specified. It is a complex number enabled to do that. <coughs> so, although we have a real part and imaginary part <coughs> the imaginary part is not really imaginary thing it is just a, a convenient way of notation and you see that here in complex uh, when we use this we actually use imaginary numbers to denote the phase as I will show you in a, in, in a few minutes time. So, suppose we were to expand this out so we can um, say that uh, p prime of x comma t equal to a e power i times k x minus omega t minus phi naught this can be recast as a e power i phi naught times e power i k x 
times e power minus i omega t okay so now what we can do is we can club these things together this is the uh, function of space so we can call it p hat of x this is a function of space times e power minus i omega t uh, this quantity is called the complex amplitude p hat of x is the complex amplitude i must emphasize one thing here we should not take the complex amplitude and take its real part that is meaningless we take the complex amplitude multiplied by e power i omega t and then take the real part of the whole thing that will give the instantaneous pressure okay is that clear uh, let me repeat again we take the complex amplitude multiplied by e power i omega t e power i omega t or e here it's e power minus i omega t you can use both this will be cos omega t minus i sin omega t so you do this whole multiplication and then take the real part and that's what gives the instantaneous pressure next i will show the equivalence between uh, these two notations so let's say we have the quantity p hat of x times e power i omega t we can do the uh, same thing with e power minus i omega t uh, if you stick with on you should uh, uh, stick with the same thing throughout your uh, calculation that's what is important uh, if you can show that whether you use e power i omega t or e power minus i omega t you will get the same results so we just have to be consistent and uh, so if you um, expand this out you will get p real of x plus i times so the hat usually denotes complex amplitude So let us multiply this thing out. So what you get is p real of x times uh, cos omega t minus p imaginary of x times sin omega t plus i times p I missed the hat sorry x times E plus p real of x times sin omega t. So this is the real part, and that's what we are interested in. As I mentioned, the instantaneous pressure is take the real part of this whole thing, p hat x e power i omega t. So this is the real part, and that's what we are interested in. So this um, which is this quantity I will uh, let me just write it again now I will uh, do a algebraic manipulation what I will do is take the square uh, of p r squared plus p imaginary squared its square root and we will multiply and divide by that. So what we get is So all it did is multiply the numerator and denominator by the same quantity. So it's really the same factor. It is this will cancel uh, minus p 
now we can uh, say that uh, you know this is very simple uh, algebra now we can say this is uh, expression is same as p r squared of x plus p imaginary squared of x times we can write this term as let us say cos phi and this term as let us say sin phi and you, you, you know that if you square this plus square this you will get 1. So, this it is uh, you know, p r squared uh, plus p imaginary squared uh, divided by this quantity squared. So, you will get 1 if you add this square this term and uh, square this term and add them. So, this we can write as cos phi cos omega t minus sin phi sin omega t. So, this could be recast as root of p real squared plus p imaginary square times cos omega t plus phi where you know the formula for phi is tan phi equal to p imaginary of x divided by p real of x I should have missed the hats. So, uh, so we can see that the imaginary part actually is another way of representing the phase the imaginary part is another way of representing the phase. So, there is nothing imaginary about it it is just a uh, it is just a reference and uh, this quantity is the this is actually the amplitude of the signal. So, this is actually the amplitude which could be written as square root of p hat p hat star. So, we uh, we we, uh, we need uh, two more things to be done we have to talk about how to express acoustic velocity in terms of acoustic pressure we also need to talk about the acoustic displacement amplitude uh, in time domain we derived a relation for acoustic velocity in terms of acoustic pressure and I we actually derived two relations one for the forward running wave one for the backward running or, or left running and right running wave. Let us do that for the uh, uh, case of harmonic domain or single frequency. So, if you remember our momentum equation was rho bar w prime by del t equal to minus dou p prime by dou x. So, let us say you had equal to when I write this it is implied that uh, we are actually taking the real part ok. So, even when you see the textbook they would not often write u prime is uh, real part of u hat e power i omega t that is implied in acoustics ok. Similarly, we can write p hat equal to now we remember that this amp complex amplitude is actually a it can be a functional space and so that is why I put the functional dependence. So, if you now substitute these equations here I will get a rho bar uh, u when you differentiate u of x it, it just stays it is not a function of time times when you differentiate e power i omega t you will get i omega e power i omega t. So, this would be minus dou p hat x over dou x uh, e power i omega t does not have any x. So, it just stays now we could cancel this. So, you can say that uh, u hat of x equal to minus 1 over i omega rho dou p hat by dou x. So, this is the relationship between acoustic velocity and acoustic uh, 
pressure in the harmonic domain. Uh, I must emphasize that uh, when you say u hat of x that is really the uh, particle velocity that is if you think of the fluid particles it is the velocity of fluid particles that is different from the speed of uh, uh, that, that, that is different from the speed of the wave. Now just to give a uh, uh, analogy to make these things clear suppose you are standing in a line let us say you are going to a movie and you are standing in a line and somebody somebody pushes the last fellow in the line and then he pushes the front uh, the guy in front and then he pushes the person in front and so on. So eventually the push which started at the end of the line travels forward and it will be uh, going till the guy at the front of the, just before the ticket counter. Now the wave itself actually moves across the line although each person may only move a little bit. So the, uh, uh, the push will go at certain speed all through the line that will be equivalent to our propagation of the wave the pattern itself moving but each person moves a little bit when the push happens that would be like our particle velocity. So that would be a, uh, a very crude analogy but I hope it helps you to understand the difference between particle velocity and phase velocity. So uh, the uh, uh, c which is the speed of sound that is the rate at which the, uh, 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 the, the wave propagates that is different from how much the fluid particle moves this is very important and when we say u hat of x this is uh, this u is called acoustic velocity and this is different from c, c is the uh, speed of sound. So please remember to distinguish between these two. The last thing that I want to speak about is the relationship between particle displacement and particle velocity. So it is quite simple displacement and velocity can be written by no uh, sorry you differentiate the displacement you get the velocity. So this is the So we say u prime equal to u hat e power i omega t and we say psi of x equal to psi of x hat times e power i omega t. So you substitute it here you get u hat e power i omega t equal to i omega so uh, times e power i omega t. So this cancels. So, so you get a simple relationship between the acoustic velocity and the particle displacement and the acoustic velocity. So we did not say anything about the energy in the wave. So the next issue that we are addressing is uh, to look at how how much energy is there in the wave and try to write expression for it and try to see uh, expression to look at the evolution of the energy okay. So this would be called acoustic energy corollary corollary because we are not uh, uh, deriving anything um, from first principles we are taking the momentum equation and the continuity equation and from those equations we are getting another equation. So we are not deriving an equation from scratch the existing equations uh, the continuity and momentum equations are there and we, we are deriving energy equation which is compatible with that. So that is why it is called corollary it is uh, from something that is already existing. So recall that the uh, uh, momentum equation or the Euler equation is of the, of, of the form rho bar uh, w prime by dou t plus dou p prime by dou x equal to 0. What I will do is to multiply this equation by u prime and uh, now I have rho bar Uh, what I will do now is to write u prime 
2 p prime by dou x can be written as dou by dou x of u prime p prime minus p prime u prime by dou x. So, why am I doing it? Uh, you will see it in a minute, it is uh, it will lead to some very important physical results. So, just be patient. Now, let us uh, substitute this over here, you will get rho bar dou by dou t of u prime squared over 2 plus dou by dou x of p prime u prime, so this term here minus p prime dou u prime by dou x equal to 0. Now, what we need is a expression for dou u prime by dou x. So, we can get that from the linearized continuity equation. So, so now we have a expression for dou u prime by dou x, which is here. We also note that uh, you, know, you remember last class we said uh, uh, rho prime equal to p prime over c square. So if you substitute that in here you will get minus 1 over rho bar c square dou by dou t of p prime. So, what we are going to do is to substitute this equation here and you will get rho bar dou by dou t of p prime squared over 2 plus dou by dou x of p prime u prime minus 1 over rho bar c squared. We have a p prime multiplying and uh, this d p prime by d t. So, we will get dou by dou t of p prime squared over 2 equal to 0. So, we can um, club this term and this term together and write very nicely. So, we can say So, this would be the acoustic energy corollary. So, let us call uh, it denote by w half this term half rho bar u prime squared plus half p prime squared over rho bar c squared. This is a term which was inside the time derivative. So, we can uh, uh, what, what is the w? So, you could imagine this w is nothing but kinetic energy. And this would be like the potential energy. So, uh, so we can say that dou by dou t of w plus dou by dou x of p prime u prime equal to 0. So, this is the so called acoustic energy corollary. So, this above equation is for the one dimensional case. If you were having a general three dimensional case, you would uh, still have a equation which is similar. Instead, uh, so uh, I must say this is for one dimensional case for 3D, what you would have is uh, instead of dou by dou x, we will have del dot P V equal to 0, where W will now be defined as half rho bar V dot V or the magnitude of the velocity squared plus half 
p prime squared over 2 rho naught c squared and this uh, term inside the uh, gradient that is p v is a vector quantity this is called i this is the acoustic intensity vector. This is in a differential form. What we can do is we can integrate this over a uh, control volume, uh, and uh, then what we can do is let's say we are integrating this equation over a control volume. This V is the control volume. Uh, plus now you can use gauss theorem to convert this uh, sorry this divergence term into uh, a surface integral so this is the integral form uh, this has a very important physical meaning what this means is time rate of change of acoustic energy in the control volume equal to the in, uh, uh, flux of intensity which is coming in minus the flux of intensity that is going out. I will write this in words. So this intensity coming in of flux com, uh, intensity flux coming in minus intensity flux coming out across the control surface. So what does this physically mean? So if you have some amount of acoustic energy that is coming in from the um, um, so let, uh, com, coming from the boundary. So let's say we uh, have a duct here and we have some boundaries. So if a lot of energy is more energy is coming into the control volume from the boundaries and uh, and if more is coming in than what is going out then naturally the energy in the control volume will increase now if more energy is going out compared to what is coming in then you would have the uh, uh, acoustic energy in the control volume decrease now if they are same uh, whatever is coming in whatever is going out acoustic energy will stay same or if nothing is coming out and nothing is coming in you have very rigid balls in your cavity then the acoustic energy will stay same. So this is a very beautiful result it is called the acoustic energy corollary later on in the course when we speak about uh, uh, the onset of thermoacoustic instabilities and how sound drives uh, sound is driven by uh, fluctuations in heat release rate we will actually be deriving extensions of this equation with source term. So right now there is no source term in it there is if you, you can have things coming from you can you can have things coming from boundary in or out but there is nothing produced inside in reality you can imagine things sound can be produced sound is always produced somewhere or the other uh, so if we are concerned about thermoacoustic instability so if there is a flame here and if there is some mechanism with which sound is produced then we have to account for it so we have to modify this equation to account for source term there could also be uh, volumetric terms which take away the energy for example there could be uh, if you if you think about a solid rocket kind of situation you know in solid rocket motors how does instability uh, there is a very big problem of thermoacoustic instability in solid rocket motors. So what they do is you know solid rocket motors use aluminized propellant and now the aluminum serves two fold purpose the alumina uh, gives a uh, the presence of alumina, al alumina uh, is very advantageous from a specific impulse point of view because aluminum burns to form alumina and this actually uh, has a very high uh, uh, heat release rate and you get uh, uh, very high temperature rise because of this therefore 
you get uh, extra thrust you get higher specific impulse but also serves another important purpose from uh, the point of view of combustion instability there are these particles um, alumina particles in the uh, uh, they are molten form in the in the uh, which is there in the gas uh, two phase flow mixture and they actually damp the oscillations you know the particles they start moving with the oscillations and they take away the energy from the oscillations uh, so that will be like a sink so uh, that will be like volumetric sink so you can have inside a volume you can have both volumetric sources and volumetric sink at the moment we have not dealt with any of them but when we uh, we will in the second of the class derive expressions which will deal with volumetric sound sources and volumetric sound sinks now there is one more thing that i want to say here actually that's really throwing a uh, spanner in the works uh, we spoke about conservation of acoustic energy but really in um, in our situation that is for example in uh, in engines or, or any such flow situations we actually have um, three different types of fluctuations acoustics is just one of them we have vorticity fluctuations and we have entropy fluctuations and i must also say that uh, we have written this whole wave equation and this following analysis everything in the absence of mean flow we are looking at a quiescent medium so in the presence of a moving medium the corollary gets much more complex and it uh, and further if we have entropy disturbances or entropy fluctuations and if you have vorticity fluctuations then uh, there is a quite a bit of debate on what is the acoustic energy itself uh, so many people are working on it it's even uh, uh, it's it's a topic of current interest so you don't have a very simple result like this you will have a much more complex result we will speak about it again in the second half of the class we are predominantly uh, dealing with on dimensional situation so what happens is acoustic intensity in a on dimensional situation So in a one dimensional situation we have uh, only the x component so we have only u so uh, so we just have v equal to u times i so and uh, if you are looking at a let us consider a special case of plane wave we have u equal to p over rho bar c so then we can say i equal to p prime squared over so so this is the uh, expression for acoustic intensity for one dimensional case it is p prime squared over rho bar c so it can be deduced purely from pressure measurements so i will uh, stop today's lecture with this what we did was we looked at harmonic waves and we wrote expressions for harmonic waves then we uh, converted or, or look found the equivalent expressions in terms of exponential functions so we looked at cos and sin as well as e power ix and and then we also derived expressions for acoustic velocity in terms of acoustic pressure we also talked about acoustic uh, uh, displacement particle displacement then we also looked at the why we need a imaginary quantity or, or in the complex number uh, what is the relevance of the imaginary quantity we saw that that is simply another way of uh, denoting the uh, phase and lastly we derived the equation for the evolution of acoustic energy it is a corollary it was derived from continuity and momentum equations then we also introduce the concept of acoustic intensity i'll stop with uh, this have a good day